it's the 23rd of August, 2022, I'm Dana Durnford, you can call 709-589-4406, 709-589-4406. Come all of you good workers, good Woo, we got a big show for everyone tonight. And there's no other way to get at it than to get after it. The International Atomic Energy Agency. Excuse me. <laughs> Where the hell did that come? They usually come in twos, don't they? Yeah, that's fusion. That's a fusion. Um, and so this was the 22nd of March, 2011. This is 10 days after the tsunami. This is still at the press club. It's around the 24th or 25th of March that they started doing these uh, releases from the Prime Minister's office. But currently, at this stage, they're still at the Japanese Press Club, FPC or something. You'll see it in the top part of the screen. screen. This video had a total of 466 views. This is 11 years old, so it's not going to be super high quality. But it's really interesting to see the cover-up in action immediately. And some of the main players, these none of these were academic nuclear scientists or nuclear academics, none of them. And they were appointed to these positions. Uh, one guy who talks a lot was the Ministry of Tourism, but he was being put on a pedestal to give out information on radiation, and he's not qualified, right? And so anybody that was journalist asking him questions, he wasn't able to answer it. And uh, he most likely has an earpiece in, because it was just a couple of days before that where he was appointed. And number two, um, the higher than normal levels of radioactive uh, cesium in fallout were detected last night. However, even if a person is exposed to the levels in question for one month, it would be as much as uh, about only 60% of radiation in a round trip between Tokyo and New York. So it would be 60% of the radiation you get on flying on a plane. This is madness to talk about, to equate flying on an airplane with a nuclear meltdown to compare radiation. It's madness. Um, it, well, it's the equivalent of going around talking to, like hanging on to a tree, picking up a tree and walking around and having a conversation with it. It's, right? It, it's... it's it's, it's not a, you know, you. it's craziness, a right? A friend in need is a friend indeed. A friend in need is a friend indeed. They also compare the meltdown. as about one-fifth of uh, one-time uh, CT scan. So they compared that the people that were affected by the radioactive fallout from multiple nuclear meltdowns at ground zero got the same dose as one-fifth of a CAT scan. So a CAT scan is a beam. A nuclear meltdown, of course, is a radioactive plume. Think of snowflakes, but instead it's atoms, pulse that are very deadly. And so to compare flying on an airplane, which has nothing to do with nuclear fuel rods and radioactive fallout, and then also to compare it to a CAT scan where you turn it on, you turn it off, when the radiation goes in your body, for instance, it's there permanently, sequesters in your muscles, your organs, your bones. It's not a comparison. 
And so they set the stage by doing that for this bombardment of now they got to tell nothing but lies to quantify the original lie. Because right, they're doing a, a presentation, they can't change up in the presentation and call it something else. So now they got to stick to it, to the lie, to keep the lie alive. It's, and that's madness, right? Now they're going to do a press conference the next day and the day after, and so they got to keep that lie alive. And they're not even... And specifically today, uh, regarding uh, Unit 3. And now Unit 3 is completely destroyed. It's completely destroyed. There's nothing functional, and eventually they use remote control cranes to strip it, and there's, instead of a 190-foot building, it's just a stump. Tokyo Metropolitan um, Fire Department um, did uh, uh, one hour operation of in introducing uh, water from uh, the ground uh, by pumping cars. Pump. So he's talking about pumping into the fuel pools is what he's talking about. To your right, the fuel pools are the red rectangular depictions at the top of the reactor buildings. And so the buildings are about 40 years old. And every 18 months or so, they're going to take at least one third of the reactor core out. And they're going to move the rest of the reactor core around and insert more fuel rods, right? And so the reactors are uh, 720 tons. And so you take out one third of that, uh, over 40 years, it's a lot of fuel, right? At the top of the building, multiple reactor cores. So right away, they're, even though the building, while they're talking, the building actually looks like that. There, there's no fuel pool and no reactor core. It's no longer there. <coughs> <laughs> and regarding uh, Unit 4. Now, Unit 4, this is... Anytime you're ready. This is uh, the remains on one, one side. Here's the remains on the other side. As you can see, it's straight to the ground. This was a 190-foot building. Now, the cement truck over there can't pump water. It, it pumps cement. Right, there's the difference between water and cement is significant. Uh, it can't pump water. And now they hooked a hose up to it, a, a, a very small hose. And the idea was to call that putting water into a fuel pool. As you can see, the building is completely destroyed front and back. There is nothing left. It was all lost. It burnt continuously for several days. Uh, TEPCO introduced uh, um, concrete, uh, concrete injecting cars um, to, uh, uh, to inject uh, um, water to the um, spendiferal pool of Unit 4. So now he's saying it again, they're putting water in, in this building that doesn't exist anymore. Uh, I'm so eventually what they done with this building when people stopped uh, paying attention was they used the cranes to strip it down. And so the fuel pools are at the very top of it. There is no top to the building, right? And uh, regarding um, the spent the fuel, uh, spent the fuel pools of uh, Unit 2, Okay, so unit two burnt continuously for several days. And a lot of the fuel went down into the earth at 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. And there's no, uh, you, you had detonations on both sides of Reactor 1, and you had detonations at Reactor 3 on the other side of it. And the building is in the, Reactor 2 is in the middle. This is, you, you can't physically, 
hang out there. That's uh, Medusa. It's a lethal dose everywhere. Uh, we, uh, on uh, 20th, uh, we, March 20th, we injected a uh, certain amount that. of water to the uh, spent field pool of uh, Unit 2. Uh, once again, for, you're talking about one hour, and then we're talking about a fire department done it. Again, they're never going to talk about nuclear scientists or nuclear academics or nuclear companies. They'll never come into that narrative. And uh, we are looking at the result of the, uh, our injection. Of Reactor 2. And damage at Unit 2 is what prompted TEPCO to discuss evacuating the Fukushima workers. Not 3 and 4, but 2. So which one are you more scared of, Reactor 2 or Reactor 3 and 4? Or, you know, I'm just... And it started uh, 5.17 um, in the afternoon uh, today, the time getting and it, it is uh, continuing now. So he's saying it started in the afternoon with external electricity. First off, there's nowhere to plug electricity into the destroyed buildings. My apologies. A little dry. Uh, spent a fair um, pool of Unit 1 is relatively stable uh, because uh, uh, spent a fair within that uh, pool is, um, has uh, very little uh, heat, uh, decay heat, uh, compared with the other um, uh, unit. <laughs> Professional lawyers. Well... That's the detonation of reactor one. And I actually got the video, just bear with me, my apologies. This is reactor one fuel pool. So the reason they're not putting water in there is because it doesn't exist. Now they, they did pretend they're putting water into the fuel pool, but you just, that's the you know one right it blew up and caught fire caught fire and blew up and blew up and caught fire and caught fire and blew up and there's the detonation again isn't that a charmer watch that one more time ba boom okay let's keep her rolling here worst case scenario was abandoned tokyo a tokyo which is 220 kilometers away. Uh, secondly, I'd like to touch upon uh, the op operation to restore uh, power uh, supply from outside grid. <laughs> you got to give them credit. Well, there's the outside grid. There's no telephone poles left. There's no, there's no telephone poles. I've looked at thousands of pictures. I can't find a telephone pole for them to restore to, uh, the power. Mr. Kato from Max. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shikata. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, and uh, he's a long, tall drink of water. Now, of course, I'm going to go back to him. To uh, Mr. Kato from Max. Uh, thank you, Mr. Shikata. Uh, good evening. So he's the Ministry of Sports. <laughs> Going to give you an update on the nuclear meltdowns. <laughs> they got all kinds of universities in Japan full of nuclear scientists. <laughs> it's so absurd. Why would you use him? <laughs> like, really? You know, you got endless, you had 56 nuclear reactors. Surely you have a nuclear scientist in your country somewhere. Somewhere. It's just so, it's so absurd that he's the spokesperson. One of the important points is that uh, we, uh, we have begun uh, sampling of uh, airborne dust and uh, surface and uh, soil uh, in the area. 
around Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station、uh, further than 20 km e t e r and put this one、uh, for、uh, nuclear, radioactive nuclide analysis.、Uh, he doesn't even know how to say radionuclides because he's never talked about this subject in his life, right? And the、uh, second material is the title.、Uh, You know, offshore、uh, radiation monitoring program.、Uh, uh, the right side is the land uh, where uh, Fuku、uh, Fukushima nuclear power station、uh, locates, and、uh, most of the right side is、uh, darker, darker one, darker part is the Pacific Ocean. So, I'll try to translate some of whatever the hell he's trying to say there. there. He originally talked about the papers he gave journalists that w a s s h o w n the airborne. He's going to talk about that again. And then he's talking about、uh, taking samples off the Fukushima nuclear power plant. And we are going to get a sample. Of seawater, surface seawater, in eight point thirty kilometer of the uh, uh, Fukushima Daiichi power station. And for that purpose, uh, the uh, research vessel Hakuho Maru has left、uh, Tokyo Harbor this morning, and now、uh, it. So Tokyo Harbor is. 30,、uh, 220 kilometers away. Now, this is、uh, 19 days of the Fukushima plume followed. And so, what he's doing is a distraction because his whole country is polluted. And、uh, this is for the foreign press, right? This is for international media that he's. The press.、Uh, So, right, when he set the precedence of flying on an airplane and CAT scans as comparisons for radiation at the beginning, then they have to stick to that for the whole presentation, which means it's,、um, they got to worm their way around. And these are not experts. So, for example,、uh, so you look、scripted. at uh, uh, Yamagata, which is number six. And Ibaraki,、uh, number eight.、Uh, the figure for iodine 131 and cesium、uh, 137 is in the order of tens of thousands. And compared to the day before readings,、uh, which is in the page before,、uh, the readings were in the order of hundred. So he's talking about tens of thousands. Beckwell's atomic decays per second of iodine 131, which has an eight day half life. And so the idea talking about that, the idea talking about that is they don't tell you there's 10 half lives or whatever. And The average person thinks it's gone in eight days, right? And so it's not very. Now, the Americans flew across at a thousand feet above the ground looking at iodine. I think it's iodine 131, if I remember correctly. It was three million Beckwells per square meter. They flew a thousand feet above the ground. Uh, 3 million Beckwells per square meter detected 20 kilometers away. So he said tens of thousands. The Americans had showed after it was over 3 billion Beckwells of just one isotope, right? And, uh, so uh, when you look at these figures, uh, it looks like very enormous. But、um, Nuclear Safety Commission says that.、Uh, Uh, even in、uh, Ibaraki Prefecture,、uh, if, you, if, you calculate, uh, if they calculate the、uh, external exposure based on this data,、uh, the dose, dose is、uh, in the order of background, and the 
the Nuclear Safety Commission says that uh, uh, there will be no uh, effect for human body. Actually, the doses were high enough, your hair was stripped from your body, and people were vomiting uncontrollably. But uh, at the same time, Nuclear, Nuclear Safety Commission says that uh, uh, we have to be vigilant to see how the fallout uh, is, uh, you know, uh, how, how, how the trend uh, of uh, fallout will be, uh, looking at weather and uh, direction of wind. So he starts off talking about the whole world. What he's talking about is we'll have to wait and see how followed is in the whole world. And he switches back to the direction of the wind. I think it's just stunning to hear these lies. And so the last couple of nights I've been listening to the 22nd, um, which is the one you're listening to right now. And it really got under my skin with all these lies. And so I spent several hours a day chopping it through it. And you're stuck with that now because <laughs> that's, that's, um, I got to get it out of my system, right? So this was France's model based on 16 days. They're given the conference on day 10. So the plume was basically right there. And then it's the, six, the 16th. And so the column lawyers doesn't do it justice. The column murderers does, but the column lawyers doesn't really do what they're doing these are not nuclear academics or nuclear scientists or nuclear so experts. I think uh, that the, uh, <laughs> the all the things I should report today thank you yeah run away little boy okay, now uh, let's move on to uh, Mr. Kaji of uh, uh, MHLW he, he's a bit of a hoop Mr. Uh, Naoto Khan, Prime Minister, Director General of the Nuclear Emergency Response Headquarters, has issued an instruction addressed to the uh, four um, prefectures of uh, Ibaraki. So four prefectures. Uh, Fukushima, Tochigi, Guma uh, prefectures. Uh, Ibaraki, Fukushima, Tachiba, and Guma. To stop the uh, shipment of spinach, also to Fukushima, uh, the uh, prohibition on the shipment of raw milk. So to stop uh, the shipment of spinach and raw milk. Well, if you're contaminating the raw milk to the point where you're going to ban it and spinach, everything else is contaminated. You can't just have spinach for starters. <laughs> That's the only thing. It's, it's beyond absurd, by the way. So also, only a few on page this. three... ...indicates... Yesterday's measurements of radioactive iodine and cesium uh, which was taken from iodine. food samples. 45 food samples yesterday. 45 food samples looking for iodines and cesium. And the hashed portions you'll see are uh, those uh, measurements which exceed the provisional standards or provisional limits. But fortunately... Because they raised the limits originally, for some of it, it was 2,200 becquels a kilogram, but generally it was 500 becquels a kilogram. They dropped it the next year to 100 becquels, but they're only talking about cesium. They're not checking for other isotopes, which is means they're not checking for cesium either. These uh, samples are all 
involving spinach as well as raw milk. So how do you get on a spinach and raw milk after multiple reactors and eight fuel pools detonate? It's, a, it's so absurd, really. Whose shipments have already been stopped. So there are no new items uh, to be reported. So trying to convince the population that the only two th issues were milk from the, those four prefectures and spinach. They picked up almost 60 million one-ton bags, by the way. Because we have the luxury of retrospect because it's 11 years later. Now, sh she's a, she shows up a lot. She's a translator, but she's, she picks up on the lies and how they're supposed to be told. And so by the time you get into week three, four, and five, she's extremely dominant. And she, she has these, this type, gobblish type factor. Because she knows it's really sneaky what she's doing. And she's, um, she, it's really something to watch. Uh, not so much at this period. She's still really sharp, but... Um, to transport in to tourism to have a, a, a brief uh, comment. And <laughs> He's got visitors. Thank you, Mr. Shikata. Uh, uh, He's the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. And it's, he has nothing to add to the conversation. Uh, what's introduced by Mr. Takahashi of Boto Bureau of our Ministry. So he's going to give a. Uh, I'm Takahashi from the uh, Ports and Harbor Bureau of the Ministry of Transport. Uh, today, uh, I would like to uh, show you how to uh, receive the precise information uh, about the radiation exposure uh, around the port of Tokyo and Yokohama. Uh, which is really, this is interesting, and we're going to play that little piece in a moment. He's the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure, Transport, and Tourism. Right, so none of these are nuclear experts, not a single one. Which is probably the most bizarre thing imaginable. It's inconceivable, really. Where's the IAEA? Where's the non-regulatory agencies? So, like, it's, it's stunning. It's absolutely stunning. At the Foreign Press Center in Japan, so the press knew better. Uh, it knew their boundaries really, really well, you can see. And uh, you can compare the data to uh, some uh, example, uh, like in the box in LED. Uh, for example, chest X-ray, uh, once time, uh, <laughs> you can be... Ex chest X-ray? Right, because you remember earlier they were talking about CAT scans and flying on an airplane, chest X-ray. That's three. Uh, uh, one. Of, that's one hundred percent. All three of them are one hundred percent deception. Right. Uh, it's they're being that's being deceitful. That's being dishonest, and it's a deadly consequence for stuff like that. These are criminals, obviously should be prosecuted for what they're doing, but it's not illegal to do this, though. It's supposed uh, 0 0.05 millisieverts. So, so you're talking about millisieverts, they'll talk about unisieverts. Uh, current situation, this is... Uh, they'll talk about... You, they'll, they'll actually start talking about unisieverts and nanosieverts. It's, uh, it's really something to cover. It's a uh, uh, very... Uh, Low level for uh, Tokyo, human health. For Tokyo. <laughs> he dis. Do you see that he, where he disappears? I don't know what to make of that. And uh, you can compare the data to. You can be exposed uh, 0 0.05 what? millisieverts. So uh, current situation. This is the. 
uh, very uh, low level for uh, human health. <laughs> I got no idea what he's doing. A high radiation levels near Tokyo at 29 million becquels a square meter in the soil after rain. And so he's saying it's like background level. It's really something because Japan unveiled plans. This was um, Reuters and Mail Online carried it, but it was Reuters who came up the story, the investigation, had planned to develop a massive government backup city 300 miles west, far, far the other direction, with room for 200,000 slaves. Back to this guy. Here, from experts in the field, iodine-131 and its accumulation in fish is probably nil, non-existent. That iodine-131 will most likely not accumulate in fish. Thank you. Because he, he forgot to add that in. So, like, this is propaganda on a whole different level. None of these are experts. And they're all ministers that got nothing to do with the nuclear industry. And they have ministries for nuclear, though, right? Uh, thank you. Uh, lastly, uh, uh, Mr. Takeshi uh, Matsunaga from uh, Foreign Ministry have a uh, brief comment. Thank you, Mr. Shikata. I'd like to uh, touch upon the foreign assistance briefly. Uh, yesterday I uh, mentioned about the rescue team. Now, he, he, he got nothing interesting to say, but the, back to the other guy before, this guy here, he, um, he talks about the airport and the shipping for radiation. And what he refers people to with the website they were talking about was... Uh, two different subsidies of United Nations. One was about uh, air traffic worldwide, and the other one was about shipping worldwide, about standards. But both of the standards, there were were United Nations, because this is like United Nations shouldn't exist, just like NATO is not supposed to exist. They've taken over our planet. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, the uh, nuclear power generation plants uh, that were affected. Now, the press conference was basically, or the, the releases was over, I think, at this point. And they were taking questions from journalists. Uh, and you can't understand what they're saying. And so we know these people speak English because we've heard them speak in English. And what she does for the rest of it is she takes the question from the journalist, she translates it into Japanese and says it to the person the question is asked to. He, who speaks English just fine, answers in Japanese. She translates it and, and then repeats it in English to the person who asked the question originally. And so there's a lot of gaps there where you got to chop, 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 but you got to listen to it all to find... Uh, by uh, the earthquake that we had just suffered, uh, besides uh, the Fukushima number one nuclear power plant are as follows. Uh, four units at the Fukushima number two uh, nuclear power generation uh, plant. So you had the number one plant shut down, all those reactors, the Dini plant is the number two where four reactors were shut down because of the tsunami and the quake. Uh, one unit at the Tokushima. One at the Tokushima plant. Uh, one unit at the Tokai, uh, Tokai number plant, two right. uh, nuclear power generation plant. Uh, and one unit out of three uh, at the Onagawa uh, nuclear power generation plant. There was actually 15 Right? There was 15 that couldn't go into cold shutdown. We're in station blackout. And station blackout is considered the worst. 
and we believe they covered up other meltdowns. Um, but we can prove it for Donnie, but I'm not... But in any event, all of the units that I have described, uh, uh, other than the uh, that, that are uh, other than the uh, Fukushima number one nuclear power plant, uh, have shut down uh, as a result of the earthquake that we had experienced. Uh, but they all have a supply of outside power source uh, and are uh, now. Uh, well, Donnie didn't have outside. Neither did Fukushima, right? So that's eight reactor, six reactors at Fukushima and four at Daini. I, th I thought Daini had six to uh, Shut down in a very stable manner uh, at a very low temperature, what is called cold shutdown. They're not going to try to open any plants at Daini. And that um, they apologized originally, not just for Fukushima, but also for Daini. And so did other uh, TEPCO. There's a question, Kana. Uh, thank you, my name is Rick Wallace, also from the Australian newspaper. I have a question for um, Mr. Nishiyama about the elevated iodine and cesium reading in the seawater sample taken off the Fukushima plant. So talking about iodine and cesium in the water off the shoreline. And the question is, um, is this thought to be caused by spraying water? Uh, is it, so the question is going to be, do they think the, uh, the radioactivity in the ocean is from airborne or from spraying? It's a very strange question. Um, that's being pumped into the plant, running off into the coast or into the ocean off the plant, or is this is that water somehow being restrained from flowing into the coast and the reading is likely to be from airborne particles uh, settling on the ocean? Uh, at the moment, we are not uh, sure uh, what the cause uh, of the elevated levels are. Well, obviously the cause of the levels is multiple nuclear meltdowns. It's surreal... Well, first off, none of these are nuclear experts, right? And it's like that for the whole uh, couple of months that you do these press conferences each day. Steve Herman from The Voice of America. Steve Herman from The Voice of America. Uh, we got an assessment from the IAEA yesterday that uh, things were not yet under control at Fukushima 1. Uh, the U.S. Embassy has just put out something saying that the radiation levels inside the nuclear power plant are still at a very dangerous level. We've had no word from anyone in the government yet uh, that uh, things are under control as far as the reactors. What is your assessment, I guess for this is probably for uh, Nishiyama Sun, what is your assessment today, right now, as to where we're at? Are we, are we in a safe zone yet? Is it still very dangerous? Is there still a chance of recriticality of you know, the spent fuel rods? Is there a chance of recriticality for all the fuel rods? Is there still a chance of a uh, total core meltdown? And is there still a chance of a total nuclear reactor core meltdown? In the reactors, can you just give us an overall assessment uh, uh, with, uh, to, to uh, tell us where we're at? So this is really important. Uh, there's a 100% unequivocal loss of the fuel pools and the reactor cores. It's 100% meltdowns. But that's not what they're going to tell you. And uh, regarding uh, the reaching uh, of weak criticality uh, by the spent fuel, uh, we consider at the moment that the possibilities are extremely low. Uh, that the spent fuel uh, will reach a criticality. Uh, um, so they had re criticalities going on for several years. And because there was huge iodine releases found hundreds of miles away in the sewage uh, and uh, garbage facilities and the water reclamation facilities where they couldn't get rid of their... their uh, sediment at the water reclamation facilities or the sewage at the sewage facilities 
or the ashes at the incinerators because of so much radiation. But it was acknowledged, right, that there was huge amounts of iodine, and the only way that can happen, there had to be recriticalities, which is an ongoing chain reaction. And uh, regarding uh, the re uh, reaching of weak criticality uh, by the spent fuel, uh, we consider at the moment that the possibilities are extremely low uh, that the spent fuel uh, will reach a criticality. And also regarding uh, the fuel, uh, the fuel has already been damaged uh, to a certain extent, uh, but we do not anticipate uh, that the situation will aggravate any further, and we do not anticipate any possibility of a meltdown. So they're claiming on the 20th, 22nd of March 2011, there was no meltdown. That's them, they're saying it. That is that is extremely significant, that particular statement. It's absurd to suggest. And so the nuclear industry has no right to exist. Zero right to exist. They, and, you know, they, they have destroyed our planet. And others have recognized that. Deteriorating plant threatens mass extinction around the world. Mass extinction around the world. Does that by radioactive fallout, right? So he's asking is the comparison because you barely understand what's the. This was 11 years ago, right? And. He's asking, is there a comparison to Chernobyl? Chernobyl was a 200-ton reactor. It was mostly graphite. These reactors are 720 tons, and they have something Chernobyl did, and they have had reactor fuel pools at the top of the buildings with decades of reactor cores. Chernobyl was a new reactor. Uh, the amount of fuel compared... An actual plutonium and uranium is 100 to 1 for Chernobyl for each of the buildings. Now he speaks fine English. There's no reason to do what they're doing. Where she, she translates it and then tells it to him. He already knew what Buddy asked. Right, because we watched the first part. These guys all spoke English just fine. Uh, I believe you all understand uh, that uh, what we have now at Fukushima is not uh, similar uh, to Chernobyl. In one word... In so it's not similar to Chernobyl. It's infinitely worse than Chernobyl. In the case of the Chernobyl uh, incident, uh, there was no... Uh, containment vessel, in other words, the strong, sturdy uh, vessel uh, that uh, covers uh, the entire uh, reactor. <laughs> That's such a, such a strange statement because, as you can see, the buildings are completely destroyed. So, uh, on, on, on that understanding, uh, we have uh, had, we have received offers uh, for cooperation uh, from uh, Prime Minister Putin and others from Russia, and a nuclear expert uh, from Russia came to Japan, and we did have an exchange uh, of views. <laughs> did you get it? They had a nuclear expert coming, came out of Russia, and they talked to that person. Uh, none of these are nuclear experts. Their country is full of nuclear experts. They had 56 reactors. They have multiple universities that teach nuclear engineering. They have uh, probably hundreds of retired nuclear experts that would have gladly lied for them. And so they got people who don't know nothing about the topic because it's hard for them to tell a 
a fr have a Freudian slip, see? They're just going to read whatever is on the sheet, on whatever page they're told to read. It's, out it's outrageous. And because hanging is, is legal in Japan, uh, it's easy to make the case they, they qualify all to be publicly hung. Excuse me. Okay. She, she's a rock star, that girl there. Hi, I'm Jerry's from Beijing Youth Daily. I'm a Not a good one, one she she's, uh, she's I'd like to know more information that. about the international assistance after the incident at the Fushima nuclear power plant. For example, how many countries have sent experts or give, uh, given some, uh, some advice or have, uh, have provided some uh, equipment to the country? Right, and so she's struggling to hear him. I got headphones on, and I've listened to her several times. I can't figure it out. She she kind of mentions experts at the very end. That's about one of the few words you can actually make out. I don't uh, remember the exact number of countries. Uh... Oh, yeah, so how many countries have reached out and offered experts and equipment? Uh number of countries, uh, but we have received uh, various advice as well as offer uh, for making available equipment and others uh, from the IAEA. <laughs> when, as soon as you hear the word IAEA, uh, that's like the worst case scenario. The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission as the non -regulatory well as many other countries had reached out to them, right? But didn't show up these were the experts that you would expect. They are, right, the defining experts, apparently. And yet, they're nowhere to ever to be seen in any of Santa Susana, for instance, in the United States, was equal to 460 Three Mile Islands melting down at the same time with radioactive fallout. I've never, ever found a single article or mention of the International Atomic Energy acknowledging that Santa Susana even exists. Nor have I ever heard the non-regulatory agencies refer to Santa Susana. It's the industry is the most gobblish type industry you can imagine. You have to get an incredible education to get a job in it. And you're going to be called upon to blatantly lie to the entire population convincingly. And so a lot of the people currently working have grown up in families that are aware of this. Their children got the education to get the job to tell lies. When they can get, with that education they got, they can get a fantastic job, probably twice to pay. But they choose the job to come out and tell the public uh, and trick and deceive the public by, on TV and everywhere else on purpose. I wrote books specifically to tell lies. It's a, it's a, it's a cult. It's a death cult. And um, it needs to be dealt with as a criminal. It's a criminal... Organization. Uh, it has no redeeming uh, you have, uh, any other uh, questions? Uh, so they're going to bail. And it was, it was really random. Just to other uh, officials, uh, uh, please do so. We, we can take uh, a few questions. Uh, okay, then Peter. Now he started off by talking about flying on an airplane and a fifth of a, a fiftieth of a CAT scan. There, there are uh, emergency kind of uh, uh, measures to leave uh, the sites and to, to uh, limit uh, the number uh, working on site to a minimum. So, according to them, there's a thousand people on site and there's a sheltered area there that normally can hold 700 people and protect them from radiation releases. Now, if you remember, the tsunami ran right through the site. 
um, and not the whole side, I'm sorry, but through the major areas where the fuel is towed. And so they would have been in shelter. Uh, for, for, in order for the protective measures or precautionary measures. Uh, but as uh, the situation uh, becomes uh, stabilized, uh, we have room you know, for uh, more uh, workers uh, coming back to the site. Uh, so, uh, so what he's saying is right now, he says it's too dangerous at the site for them to work so they're sheltering in the place. But they're hoping that that'll change and they can go out and start working, connecting power and blah, blah, blah. Two reactors that you can't connect power to that are completely destroyed. Chicken neck is what I started calling Any other him. questions? He's a chicken neck, eh? Well, okay, yeah. uh, the workers who left yesterday. Are the workers who were at the site yesterday on the site now? That's a good question, right? You just got two more clips I think to that's, go. Uh, that's the case. Uh, the, uh, after, uh, the, you're talking about the smoke. Uh, yeah. uh, so there was huge smoke releases from reactor three. They actually abandoned the site. And this is what the journalist is actually asking him because of the discrepancies. And you can see him trying to um, shrug uh, off. Because he's been accused of lying right there. And, and, and I think uh, that, that was a uh, uh, resumption of uh, uh, the, the work. Uh. So he's saying the smoke. Now the smoke is lethal doses. These are lethal doses, and everything that they touch are leaving uh, horrific amounts of emissions in many, 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 many sievers, hundreds of sievers. You can't tippy-toe through this stuff, right? That's a death sentence. They're Medusas. You can't go near it. And so what he's going to do is pretend that that's not happening. Uh, for those uh, on site. And, and treat it like it's just smoke from a campfire. And once the smoke stops, everything is normal again. That's what he's going to suggest, which is an absurd Emergency suggestion. Room. They weren't necessarily working on the actual units. He, he described it as all being the same room. I'll tell you. They weren't actually working necessarily. So he was saying they got to stay in the rooms because you can't actually work there. But, but the, they, they are uh, on site, and of course, uh, uh, it, it depends on the, uh, the situation uh, of uh, uh, individual units. And uh, uh, Mr. Nishiyama didn't really elaborate on, on where uh, those workers are, uh, except uh, <laughs> uh, many. So they're not going to elaborate on where the workers are, but they're on site somewhere. Last clip is the end of it. No other questions? Uh, no more uh, questions. Then uh, let, uh, let us uh, conclude. Now, they still haven't found all the bodies, but everything is hunky-dory, according to him. Um, and so now that we... That was the whole um, 22nd of March presentation at the press club they stopped doing that a few days later and they're all well they continue to do their releases but they're all from the prime minister's office and so if you made it this far a radiation forecast in Japan was kept secret to avoid panic in the whole of society, to avoid panic in all of society. Well, you know, like the reasons you got 100, 120 sirens around a nuclear power plant is so you can cause panic in the whole of society. That's why you got the sirens. That's the specific reason. And when you had finally had an accident, 
they wouldn't tell you. 70% of the children tested are contaminated with just cesium. And you can't be just contaminated with cesium. All of them from outside the Fukushima prefecture. And so there's a simple way to appreciate how bad it actually was. They, um, 55 countries banned food from 14 prefectures. Not just Fukushima in the middle. Because all of that was incredibly radioactive. So 55 countries banned the food for over a decade. Except for Canada. Canada removed all restrictions after 93 days because the nuclear industry runs Canada. And so... Japan couldn't ship the food anywhere, only to Canada. So the most radioactive of radioactive food in human history were shipped to the supermarkets throughout Canada. Now everybody in Canada is sick, and nobody can get a doctor because the, the doctors are just completely overwhelmed with a massive amount of illnesses from radiation sickness. Japan foreign minister stopped claiming the food is safe. But Canada had lifted restrictions in June, 93 days after the... It's, it's absurd. That's an absurd, humiliating fact about this. Tokyo paper, what's happening to children 50 kilometers from the Fukushima plant? Nosebleeds, diarrhea, lethargic... Sources say there's a thousand kinds of radioactive material, not just cesium and iodine. NHK starting to broadcast the truth. Large increases in brain tumors and cancers. Everybody died. Just I'm alive. It's killing me, said 18-year-old. Government keeps telling them the ICRP UN says it's safe when the levels here. exceed the provisional standard values established by the Food Safety Act, the authorities will investigate and analyze data uh, properly. In other words, get lost. Uh, Chiba, which is right alongside of Tokyo, at 400,000 times the weapons fallout. This means you got to evacuate Chiba immediately. So they didn't investigate it, and they didn't evacuate Chiba. Kyoto confirms 40,000 microsievers per hour at the Tokyo supermarket. These are absurd numbers, folks. The head of the University of Tokyo Radioisotope Center before testimony about internal radiation, I am shaking with anger. Iodine detected in Austria, Czech Republic, Hungary, 10 days after criticalities talks at Fukushima. Elevated radiation also in Germany, which gave up on f uh, nuclear immediately and uh, appropriately. Sweden, Slovakia, UK experts claim it's unlikely from Fukushima since it's so many months ago. No, it's the re-criticality. Ongoing constant emissions is still going on today. Poland and Denmark reported radioactive fallout. The IAEA said we're a little concerned, a little. It's, uh, they shouldn't exist. They're just, uh, they're a plague, the atomic plague itself. 45% of kids in Fukushima survey had thyroid exposures to radiation, up to 50,000 microsievers per year for one-year-olds. 50,000 microsievers. These are absurd numbers. Uh, you, you're not supposed to measure it in microsievers. You're supposed to be measuring it in atomic uh, decays, atoms stuff that you can consume and can sequester in your muscles, your organs, and your bones and haunt you every second for the rest of your life. It's an absolute betrayal to measure this in microsievers or millisievers or nanosievers or unisievers. 
Fushima hospital workers say five out of seven babies, five out of seven, born with birth defects. So Down syndrome, we see clusters of that around every single major nuclear accident. And babies lost by miscarriages. Five out of seven babies were born with birth defects. And you would expect that. Uh, radioactive iodine in 50% of the children's thyroid at 35,000 microceivers. These are absurd numbers. Consider a microceiver uh, just low ball, really, really low, is 150 uh, becquels per second. These are, these are absurd numbers. So let's do the math on that for you. And this is what will happen after Russia and Ukraine, by the way. So 35,000 microceivers, 35, Dana, times 150 atoms pulsing energy every second per microceiver is 5.2 million atoms pulsing energy every second. We got a poll there tonight for everybody. Should Japan's deadly radioactive food be banned worldwide? We got 49 votes and 96% of the people said unequivocally it's a crime to grow food and to ship it from a nuclear wasteland. Highly radioactive sewage... 334,000 becquels per kilogram. 180 becquels is considered pre Fukushima an evacuation zone at a nuclear power plant. Some were 55, right? Air samples in Tokyo, 270 times more contaminated with cesium 137 global weapons follow peak. In other words, you're supposed to have. 36 million people are supposed to evacuate Tokyo because you can never clean that up. That's infiltrated everybody's furnaces and air conditioners and um, environment permanently. The head of the Fukushima Health Study, the doctor in charge of the health study, said a massive 100... Uh, well, low ball we call it microceivers a year is okay for a pregnant mom. And that the effects of radiation don't come to people that are smiling. And that person's in charge of the health survey, the health study, rather. This is, um, it's criminal on a whole different scale. There's, we don't have anything we can compare it to. Pregnant women used for decontamination activities. This is absolutely absurdness. Imagine if you had pregnant women, uh, advertisement in the paper for pregnant women for Hanford, what kind of uproar there actually would appropriately be. Tokyo drinking water is unsafe. Well, that's permanent. If you contaminate the drinking water, you contaminated all the pipes and the water reclamation facilities. You can't undo that. High levels of radioactive material in the sewage in Tokyo at 170,000 becquels a kilogram in the slag from the sewage from the excrement. That's a poisoned population. That's evidence again, right? And it's the same thing with their water filtration the sediment left over is so radioactive they can't physically get rid of it because they want TEPCO to get rid of it because TEPCO created it. TEPCO said, no, it's yours. We don't want nothing to do with it. Pregnant woman gets a free new house if they move back to Fukushima. Think about who actually thought that one up. How insane the nuclear industry actually is. There's no limit. There is no limit on what the nuclear industry will do to you if you don't hold them accountable. And because you're not holding them accountable, there's no incentive 
for them not to be extraordinary evil. And pregnant women get a free new house if they move back into a nuclear wasteland. But this is a, every facet of this story is absurd and dangerous, and we've got no choice but to challenge it. Uh, children are being severely harmed, must be evacuated. The world has never come across a situation like that. Indeed, where they refuse to acknowledge the radiation is harmful. Nuclear waste being processed during an explosion in France had radioactivity of 17 becquels a kilogram. They were packing, packaging, after Fukushima, still packaging waste at 17 becquels a kilogram which is 30 times less contaminated what Japan was shipping worldwide. Because Japan had a limit of 500 becquels per kilogram at that time, right? Which was genocide. And they were shipping it all over Canada for 11 years straight. If nobody else would take it, it got shipped to Canada. Before Fukushima, 100 becquels a kilogram is nuclear waste after it's safe to eat. It was actually... 0 0.1 becquels a kilogram was considered acceptable. And Fukushima will start burning dirty bombs at 100,000 becquels a kilogram. And you can't incinerate radiation, you just liberate it back into the environment. And when you're talking about a billion pounds, they're grinding it up, shipping it all over the country and burning it in the incinerators in the cities and communities. It defies, you, like pre-Fukushima, if you wrote a book with all of this into it, everybody would just make fun of you. You would be the most humiliated person in history. Everybody would shit on you for the rest of your life. There's zero ways, there's zero chance anybody in history would dream up the headlines I'm showing you. Pre-Fukushima. That's how batshit crazy the nuclear industry. And when you say nuclear industry, you're talking about millions and millions and millions of goblins that are actively out there trying to deceive your planet. It's truly like an invading alien force. That's the only way to describe the nuclear industry. Is government trying to contaminate every region of the country by burning radioactive dirty bombs? Like, this is, you couldn't do this in America, you couldn't do it in Canada, you couldn't do it anywhere else on the planet. And you, you're liberating the radiation back into the environment. None of it makes sense, right? And so it's, it's I, can, I can understand why people that are not looking at it or just listening won't believe it. And looking at it, I can understand they won't believe it because it just doesn't seem possible to the average person. It just doesn't seem conceivable to anybody. Child's risk of cancer from radiation, by the way, is 10 to 100 times higher than an adult with the same exposures. But So imagine how bad it is for birds and insects and stuff like that. It's 100% an annihilation machine. 16.8 unisievers an hour at a park in Tachigi, crowded with families 100 kilometers from Fukushima. Baby food maker ignores the info on cesium. Again, right, when you only acknowledge cesium, you're, that's the definition of stupid. If, uh, you know, if you're going to be honest, because the reactor's biggest byproduct is curium isotopes. Initially included, further investigation was unnecessary. Uh, Nagano, new radiation results around in elementary schools. Schools, with an S. Nagano at 20 times normal, 1.7 unisievers an hour, 270 kilometers. Um, Tokyo Kita Award at one unit of an hour, but I showed you 29 million atomic decays per square meter. Uh, eight, but one unit of which is pretty tiny, is considered harmful. 500 trillion 
Back was a kilogram in Tokyo. Highly radioactive glass rained on Tokyo. These are unconscionable numbers, folks. Hot spots found in large numbers 220 kilometers away in Tokyo. In northern Chiba, I showed you earlier, was 400,000 uh, becquels of, uh, I can't remember, was it Xenon 133? Japan bans radioactive green tea from area 40 miles southwest of Tokyo, which is a way, because Fukushima's north, so you're heading the opposite way past Tokyo that you can't use the green tea leaves, which means Tokyo is destroyed and everything in between. Japan's uh, medical experts concerned about children's exposure. 51% of the kids were contaminated with cesium. They're not checking for plutonium. They're not checking for curium. Not checking for strontium. For every cesium, there's 100 times more strontium produced. Seventy percent of the children in Kanto a region, including Tokyo, has radioactive gamma in their urine. One hundred seventy-nine microsieverts. It's absurd to measure this stuff in microsieverts per hour at an elementary school. Hot spots at bus stops, main gate, schoolyard, pool, gym. How can people? How can the nuclear industry allow children in that environment? Well, they, they give them dosimeters and they got to send it away to the universities after. So they study them like lab rats. They see them as lab rats, right? They don't see them as humans. Kids run marathons on streets with activities of 134,000 becquels a square meter. People inhale up to 85,000 becquels of radioactivity in just four hours. These are now they're only acknowledging iodine one thirty one. There's ten times more one thirty two, thirty times more one thirty three, and deionize and radiate the thyroid glands nine times more effective than the effect of iodine one thirty one. There's thirty one times more iodine one twenty nine for every iodine one thirty one produced. The list just keeps going, right? Children's health problem increasing Incurable stomach aches, chest pains, nosebleeds that don't stop. For over a year, nosebleeds that don't stop in your children. And they don't move them out of there. Well, some of them did, but the majority can't. 43% of the kids have thyroid abnormalities. Um, this is for life, right? Your thyroid will take everything it can and turn into a radioactive hormone on top of that. Your pituitary gland stores the radioactive iodine hormones on top of that. Under 3% of children exposed to Chernobyl radiation in the womb were diagnosed as healthy at the age of 7. Over 3 million children require treatment. If you're getting treatment from radiation exposure, it's permanent. Many will die prematurely. 3 million Chernobyl was basically insignificant compared to Fukushima. And Chernobyl is brutal worldwide on top of that. But compared to Fukushima, it's not... It's uh, tiny in the, in the same footprint. That's just it's so heartbreaking. And there was no need to cover this up. There's no need uh, to murder everything on the planet to protect the nuclear industry's image. That's what they've done it for, right? Pre-Fukushima was one, uh, one in a million children. When you scale this up, it's 358,000 out of a million. 13,646 out of 40,000 with tumors started. You can't, if you don't treat that constantly, then that turns into a catastrophic tumor. But because it's your thyroid, then you're, you got saturated which means you're producing a ridiculous amount of radioactive hormones which is a catastrophic event to the human it just changed your 
It's everything about it is just awful. Fukushima girls have three times more thyroid tumors over 15 millimeters than boys, and 79% more medium sized tumors than boys. And so I, I talk about that quite often where so you got to protect the female species of the planet. Not just humans, but all species, because radiation hates the female humans and species of the planet. Thyroid abnormalities in 55% of the Fukushima girls tested aged 11 to 15. It's catastrophic, folks. And my, my heart goes out to the victims and their loved ones and their families. It's just a terrible, a terrible, uh, the atomic plague is not a game. And thyroid cancer risk lasts the entire life after radiation exposure. Irreversible heart damage for children with 50 becquels a kilogram of gamma It's not a game, right? And they're shipping food out of 1,100 becquels a kilogram. And they're not checking for alphas and neutrons and gamma and beta. They're just allegedly. I, don't, I doubt if they're checking for gamma. Radiation, small doses, because you can't check everything. And it's a nuclear wasteland where they picked up millions and tens of millions of bigs. Radiation, and which is only 3% of the land, in just a single prefecture. Radiation in small doses could actually be disproportionately worse. Uh, doses spread over time might be more dangerous than doses given out one. Children with over 11 becquels of cesium start to see heart problems. So imagine insects and birds and animals, because if you don't, you're, you're uh, making a fatal mistake for your planet. Officials admit deadly Fukushima nuclear meltdown cover-up. Typical president, we lied. And we're finding scum, scummerson, scumbag gunnerson. We're finding now that girls having, not him, this was studies that came out. He, he, they, people inserted them into it. And uh, what Gunnarsson done is 100% criminal. It, what he done was evil. He used to make the, the racks for the assemblies for the fuel pools. And then he came out and pretended the fuel pools were intact. Of all people, he would have known the difference, right? And he done he did, and he, his wife was a spokesperson for the nuclear industry for two decades. What they've done is just despicable. It, re it really is disgusting. It's 100% criminal on top of that. If, you know, criminal where it should be a crime, apparently it's not. We're finding now girls are having twice as many thyroids. It's actually three times as boys. And in adults and humans and large animals, 50 becquels a kilogram leads to irreversible lesions in the vital organs. There is nothing good to come out of that, only endless diseases and illnesses and miseries. TEPCO is reportedly struggling to find homeless to work at the nuclear meltdown. Fukushima, two years on, and the largest nuclear decommissioning finally begins. A lot of people forget about that story. So they didn't start the decommissioning until two years later. Despite the lies they told you, they didn't actually start it. And within one year, they were allegedly unloading fuel from spent fuel number four, which I showed you earlier didn't exist. But I did show you at the night the cover story was fully underway by day 10. It was 100% denial on day 10. On day 10, they unequivocally swore up and down there was no nuclear meltdown, no criticalities. Dana lawyer, don't listen to Dana. Don't listen to Dana. Hydrogen is so leaky it can penetrate and weaken steel. 
It can penetrate and weaken it. So if you start uh, storing this stuff and carrying it long distances, that material eventually is going to fail, right? Hit the Ukrainian atomic plant poses a risk to the energy grid because they're they're um, piped in together, right, with the European grid. So if they if Russia shuts, they already got most of the reactors shut off at um, one that's captured. It's still hot, but summer is over in Europe. This was a blog uh, who didn't understand how the things work. 2011, Germany decided to mothball its nuclear carbon-free. Uh, all nuclear power plants need two external dedicated large gas, oil, and coal plants to supply it. It cannot supply itself. Despite what the scumbag spammers might put out there, it doesn't power itself. Power plant in response to the Fukushima disaster. Well, they got covered in radioactive fallout. So I do think the nuclear energy can be a meaningful part of carbon free. Because they're bombarded with the words uh, climate change, global warming, net zero, and carbon free. Which is four different papers written by four nobodies that were snatched by UN and is being used to bludgeon the entire planet into no existence. The world has become highly vulnerable to nuclear disasters. Highly vulnerable. Countries have gone back on pledges and Ukraine war adds to the risk of a nuclear catastrophe. Countries are vulnerable. The world has become highly vulnerable to nuclear disasters. Um, well, a lot of it's the drought because the nuclear plants are dependent upon 4,800 tons of water a minute. 4,800 one-ton pickup trucks of water a minute. The alarms expressed worldwide persuaded Russia, which was fostered by the, the media, the, the pro-nuclear media worldwide, which is all the media, have come out screaming propaganda about what was happening to the point where it's really difficult to understand the actual picture or what's going on there because of the constant misrepresentation. Incompetent narcissist uh, Francis Furiat Macron as leader prepares for woeful autumn. He just, he came back from vacation while they're having a drought of catastrophic proportions. It's a bit worse in 500 years of, um, of, uh, saw, of core samples, they, don't, they haven't seen anything like it, right? And so, because, like, this is, a lot of it's manufactured, so all the UN countries, all NATO countries, in, put an embargo against Russia in February. And instant out of that was going to be, had to be, of course, was inflation worldwide. And this is, this 100% was on purpose. And that way the world gets mad at Russia, right? Everybody's, come on, beat up Russia. Everybody wants to yell at Russia because they can't fill up their cars. They can't buy groceries. And so if you want to make a uh, planet angry, that's the perfect way to do it. Because the majority of the planet is living on their paychecks week to week, right? And when you change that equation and then cause the inflation, they can't survive anymore. Emmanuel Macron is set to be back. Uh, he's on a holiday on jet skis while the rest of the country can't even turn on their air conditioners. He's out enjoying himself. So people, the, the opposition party is going to use that, obviously, right, as a weapon. While other world leaders work to tackle issues of global relevance. How much longer did our video get last night? I wonder. Let's check that out for... Because every... Uh, 
12 hours after each show, my videos will get longer. So 48 seconds to 56 seconds, which is 8 seconds longer. So 12 hours after my show last night, my video got 8 seconds longer. Each day at exactly 12 hours after the video ends, my videos typically get longer or shorter. Is Clinton's nuclear power plant the most expensive in the world? They were talking about 30 years ago, it was $4.25 to build Clinton's nuclear power plant, which is equal to $10 billion today. It was, it was probably a waste of time to grab the story, but we did. What will happen if the captured nuclear power plant in Ukraine explodes? Well, the radiation covers the whole planet. By the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. And so this is the model. And you can see 70 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 20, 230 kilometer plumes, right? Well, here's a 19-day plume from Fukushima in the bottom right-hand corner. And it covers the whole planet in 19 days. So why is the nuclear plant in Ukraine going to be smaller? Because even if just one plant melts down or one fuel pool, it's going to look exactly like this. Because that model is based on venting from Fukushima, not the actual meltdown. So if a venting model 11 years ago looks like that, then a nuclear meltdown won't look like that. It'll look just like that. That model ends at 19 days, 466 hours. But what they're trying to claim is it stays fairly local. That's a 100% deceit. That's 100% deceit. China burns more coal because the hydropower system, they're in a brutal drought. And of course, China's building all these reactors that are dependent upon water. Without the water, they melt down 50, uh, 50 minutes later, they start melting down. And the Yangtze River, which runs through most of the country, so that's a horrible thing to put a nuclear power plant on your biggest source of water going through your country because it's carrying radiation throughout the country and people are drinking and using it for bathing and cooking now you remember this the New York City put out a video of what to do when they have a nuclear strike not if they have a nuclear strike but when they have a nuclear strike and of course people took notice to that framing of the narrative and I guess they wanted some more clicks because they put out this it was well, all well watched but not well received and the mayor approved an alarming public service announcement saying it's proactive they're saying when they get a nuclear strike not if they get a And so a lot of people were saying, how the hell can she afford a great big apartment like that in New York City? Because New York City is the same price as renting an acre on the moon. And the UN chief, which the United Nations is the military industrial complex, stopped nuclear saber rattling. So this is about the population, not Russia. And the United Nations is not supposed to exist. They don't have any sovereignty over your country. So why are they telling you how to think, how to eat, how to sleep, how to walk, how to stand up? Rostatom Finnish. Now, the Finnish president is a 35-year-old female who likes to party on the weekend. And I mean party. Uh... This firm over nuclear Finnish firm is 
firm over terminating nuclear power plant contract. Russia's suing them. How come everybody's not putting an embargo against Rostatom, which is the nuclear industry, government-run industry in Russia? They're suing them for $3 billion. If you're a private firm and you're getting sued for $3 billion, that's a big deal. Because they told Russia they didn't want their business after the invasion. Russia, well, we'll just sue you. Department of Energy, now this is the World Nuclear News. They're so evil, they really should get an award for it. Department of Energy marks a milestone as the XC, which is xenon on the table of diseases. 100. What a strange name, man, XC. Really, right? That's such a strange name. Basic design, which is a small modular reactor that doesn't exist. It sure gets a lot of traction in the media, though. Uh, Department of Energy, the, the military, or the, the prom they're the promoters of nuclear. They fund nuclear. That's what Department of Energy does. It doesn't regulate nuclear. It funds it. And by proxy, then, it has to cover up its, its um, brutal releases. Awarded USD $40 million in funds for a six-year project to create the basic design. So six years will bring us up to 2028. Then, it's gonna, then they got to get it approved. It's going to bring up to 2034. Then they got to try to build one if the, everything goes good. That's going to bring you up to 2040, 2045. By the time they build it, get the kinks out of it, then build another one, engineer the router, then build it with the kinks out of it for these small modular reactors. If they put one one hundred of the energy they're putting into this into storage for renewables, problem would be solved. If you just drill down deep enough to tap into geothermal, under all existing gas, oil, and coal plants and replace it with geothermal instead of using um, the fuels, problem solved. You can do it if you want to. You just got to want to do it. That's the solution. You don't need storage for geothermal or tidal energy. And there was funding... A multi-billion dollar demonstration project, the U.S.'s first commercial facility to produce high assay, low enriched uranium, halo-based fuel, which Russia is the only one that produces, and, and they need that for their stupid small modular reactors. Bill Gates and the rest of a new scale can't exist without that fuel. And this is, in, this is enriched fuel at 20%. So you can imagine how toxic that's going to be once they put it through a chain reaction. And imagine the isotopes, the splitting the atom that's going to happen once you take it out. These small modular reactors are producing 35 times more intermediate level waste, 30 times more high level waste, and 5 times more fuel rods. They're not, like, it's so evil that... And there's no one pushing back against them. There's no incentive for them not to be degenerate scumbags on top of that. Zero incentive for them to be not be evil. Poland approves the regulatory changes for nuclear facilities, which really means nothing, right? But then, then the lobbying group Nuclear Engineering International make a big deal of it. Bill Gates, who doesn't have anything to do with this outside of his name, uh, company raises record funds, $750 million, is nothing to Bill Gates. He carries that around in his wallet, for God's sakes. Construction partners sought for $10 billion nuclear fusion build. Again, they're going to put all this hopes and dreams into something that don't exist rather than come up with solutions for things that already exist. Like the only thing renewable needs is storage. Like 
um, water batteries where you create two um, reservoirs. You fill them up with water and then with excess energy, you pump water to the top one. When you need it, it's released into the bottom one. Just recirculates over and over. Or compressed air storage where you pump air in the big tunnels. You know, and so you see all the small modular reactors, all the hydrogen, all these pipe dreams. When the real stuff exists and it won't spend a nickel, no universities will look at it. The universities will burn everything the country can throw at it on these projects, but it won't, they won't have a single closet there to work on renewables. It's not a betrayal. It's an assault. Louisiana regulators filed suit against federal regulators over the Grand Gulf nuclear power plant. Money owed. Money. Well, what happened was Entergy was charging the, the, the customers overcharged them. And they got caught at it. And they're working out a deal where they're going to give the money back to the people they took it from in credit. So, so like, if you go to the restaurant and, they're, and they're, you're giving your credit card and the restaurant charges $50,000 and you're like, holy shit, I, I, I the, you know, the bank says, well... Your credit card don't work anymore because you spent fifty thousand dollars for a, a pizza at a restaurant, and they're like, "This is criminal," and the judge says, "Well, we're not going to make them give you back the fifty thousand dollars, but they're going to give you food until it's paid off. They're going to give you free pizzas until that fifty thousand dollars is paid off." I skipped one. I didn't have the headline for this story. Uh, this was a new game new, called Nuclear Blaze. And the kids, even three-year-olds, will be the firefighters that will go into the nuclear blaze and put it out. That's training for the next nuclear meltdown, right? Get them while they're young. <laughs> Don't underestimate the evilness of nuclear. That's the one thing we learned. You'll learn quick if you hang around here. Is you don't underestimate how evil the nuclear industry can get. That's a mistake right away. <coughs> <laughs> U.S. Abilene Christian University applied to build a molten salt research reactors. And so the research reactors in Germany, research reactors in France have shown that they change the sex ratio of males and females in the communities where they're to, which means they're poisoning people in the community. You can't do that without poisoning every single person in the community to get a statistical number in a sex chain, in a sex ratio, sex change, sex ratio. Well, what it does is changes the amount of males to females, more males than females. That's the discrepancy that they're going to see. And what that means is less population. But you can't do that without doing the same to all the species too, right? But why, why would you put, like, you know, Santa Susana was a molten salt research reactor. Yeah, these are, are not production, power production, but they still release so much emissions that you're going to poison the local population. Which is what you expect from a university, by the way. That's the norm. Uh, this is scary. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 boosts nuclear power with unbelievable tax credits and unbelievable funding. What it does is it drives the price down where it's comparable with solar and wind. What a disgusting betrayal. What a despicable betrayal. Your Ranko wraps on, ramps up net zero targets. Uh, dear Uranium Enrichment Company, 
and are surrounded by farms. Despicable scum, man. Just despicable scum. Saudi Arabia to set up an e-platform for nuclear emergency communications. Really? Saudi Arabia? Where they just put a girl in jail for 34 years because they didn't like your Twitter feed? And, and she got a 34-year travel restriction after. Who was going to university in the UK, came home for a visit. They snatched her and disappeared her. They're, they're a stupid country, man. That's a stupid, greedy, driven country, that country. That's a stupid... Incredible stu and Now, you can go to jail for life for saying that if you lived there, by the way. Most powerful nuclear bomb ever, which was uh, the Soviet Union, the Taser bomb or whatever they call it, was equal to 3,800 Hiroshima bombs going off at the same time. But the difference between Tonga and that bomb is... It's equal to 3,800 nuclear weapons of radioactive fallout. And so they ignore that facet, and they only talk about the explosive power. And that's a despicable thing to do. Political suicide, it's nonstop. This is Daily Caller, so they're a big media. But it's a nonstop assault on Germany for 11 years straight for snubbing nuclear. 11 years straight, media all day long. They have to come out and do at least one attack against per media against Germany for quitting nuclear power. Nuclear crack. Germany will shutter nuclear power plants despite looming winter shortages. Well, first off, they're not going to shut it off till the end of uh, December, halfway through winter. And they're not going to shut it off if and let everybody freeze it. It's stupid. Moron. Bird brains. Speaking of bird brain, Framatone from France was was a Riva part of a Riva, which went bankrupt, which which was the actual government. It went bankrupt to get out of their obligations for a million years that they because of the fuel. They started up another company the very next day and got all their old business back without the million-year monkey on their back. To deliver a neutron instrumentation system to South Carolina a nuclear power plant. They, they can't even, uh, they got half their fleet shut down from corrosion. They can't even fix their own reactors. They're going to help others. Well, that's for fission, though, wasn't it? Fusion. No, and I can't remember. NATO policy elevates the risk of nuclear conflict. NATO was created in response to the USSR. So therefore, when the USSR dissolved and the pensions and patents of the country with it, the idiots, instead of somebody else taking over and fixing it, what a stupid... This nuclear, right? That's what nuclear does. Nuclear's... It exists because stupid never dies. Russia is warned of a potential catastrophic nuclear war if NATO continues to fuel the fire. There's nobody can, there's no more paychecks, no more pensions, no more beaches. Nobody's going to do it. I don't think, well, crazy people can pull it off. So everybody else has to pay the price. The governor, uh, Kathy Hotch, who has a sweet house in Virginia Lake that's heated by a nuclear power plant. Strange story, folks. Appears to have a nice spread on a man-made lake that's heated by a nuclear disease factory known as a nuclear power plant. That makes the water 70 degrees even in the winter. Why would you, anybody in their right mind, live on that pond? You, you are literally an idiot if you actually lived there. 
You're literally the most gullible person imaginable if you live right there. That is an absurd story. Streaming service relist Sheffield nuclear apocalypse drama thread. They took that down because of the Russian war from the streaming services. They're finally putting it back up because they didn't want people getting freaked out. Like your government is literally full of idiots, actual idiots, not almost idiots or future idiot possible, but actual idiots. Boris Johnson in UK is proof that you have no future. U.S. Navy is looking to scrap the Beak E, the first nuclear power aircraft carrier with a private shipyard. You got any idea how many mistakes that's going to be? Well, they're all evil anyway, so... Because the Washington State Puget Sound Naval Shipyard historically handled the disposal of nuclear assets, yeah? Disposal released into the environment. There's no checks and balances at these places. Uh, the Navy wants to reduce its inactive ship inventory. If nuclear testing was allowed, they would go out and just bomb it. They wouldn't hesitate. They're, they're actually insane. South Korea, SK invested $250 million in Bill Gates. Let's face it, Bill Gates, his name is just used on it. And uh, he's, not, he's not working there. He's not working on a design. He's not checking in to see how it's going. Your media is so gobbledish and... Um, it doesn't know how to be normal anymore. It just knows how to be gobblish. TVO wins arbitration case over diesel generators. It's like $30 billion. Resolve the issues regarding supply of backup diesel generators. Oh, 40 million euros, 40 million pounds. So, what is it, 45 million US or something? Wow, that the O because of the generator screw up. These are massive generators. You've got to have external power to fire them up too. Education department, not quite sure. Radioactive rock ended up in a Sydney science classroom in an all-girls school. And nobody knows how it ended up in an all-girls school classroom. The principal took swift action and cordoned off the prep room and surrounding labs. Why would you do that if it's not harmful? Australian Nuclear Science Technology Organization officers, officers, which is just scary as shit, isn't it? Encased a box in lead, which is L-E-A-D, stupids, and removed it from the grounds. Because, you know, it's not harmful. You would have to hold it in your hands for 250 hours to hurt you, he claimed, <laughs> which is the typical lies, right? Why put it in the lead box then? The principal drilled down for an answer as to how the radioactive material found its way onto the school grounds, and they were asked if this was the first instance of radioactive material being found in the school. He said it was an instance of naturally occurring Radioactive sand being discovered in the surrounds of a school on the north coast. No, that, that wasn't natural. That was brought there. It was probably the tailings from one of the mines on top of that. That's a hundred-year-old school. I bet you that's what happened, too. U.S. South Korea opened the biggest drills in years. They, they like, uh, United Nations went in and bombed North Korea into no... Every community was flattened, and they burnt down every, every community, every city, with napalm, which is liquid jelly-like gas that is unbelievably lethal. 
sticks to everything and humans and that, right? And just, it's terrible. There was 10 million with vicious injuries, 3 million killed. And for 70 years, they won't let uh, the country participate with the rest of the world. What's the point of that, though? What's to be gained from that, really? Is you create a boogeyman, but that's that's absurd. And you got all the medias in the world trying to make you scared to sleep at night that North Korea is going to get you. North Korea has attacked how many countries in 70 years? Not a single one. How many countries have United Kingdom and America attacked in the last 70 years? It's, and who's going to be the victims in North Korea? Is the women and the children, right? No matter what country it was, whether it's North Korea or any other country, if you isolate them after flattening them for 70 years, they're going to be dysfunctional. And they're going to have these massive drills they have each year, but they're right alongside of Russia. That's Russia's back door. And so if something happens, that's a pretty nice place to have all kinds of military actively participate, participating. And last but not least, are Taiwan government officials secretly Japanese spies? It's a hard, it's a hard call. They could very well be, right? Another crazy night of everything. And when we looked at that presentation from um, the 22nd of March 2011 or earlier, it showed you the cover story at 10 days in was now they couldn't change the story. They had to keep the lie alive by... And they had no nuclear experts participate. It's, re it's really something. I'm glad I got it out of the way because... Uh, let's check our poll here tonight. 63 votes. Should Japanese deadly radioactive food be banned worldwide? And originally the poll said, should evil Japanese deadly radioactive food be banned worldwide? It wouldn't let me post it until I removed the word evil. And Japan is evil. That's what they're doing is just... Uh, evil is not really a good enough word, right? For what Japan does and continue to do and done. And the law is so now so embedded that um, you can't have a conversation with them. They, they, 11 years of telling the same lies over and over, they actually probably believe the lies at this stage, right? Poisoning the entire planet. So the poll tonight is, should Japan stop growing and shipping food from the nuclear wasteland. And that's 14 prefectures were banned by 55 countries worldwide. Ooh, that was a big show tonight, my goodness. We raised uh, $250 last night. Uh, from a single donation, James Lucid, as you know, which means when my truck goes in the shop tomorrow, I don't have to think about it as covered. And that's, yeah, it's hard to appreciate it. We're, uh, we're on our way now, and then the, um, the idler control valve is shipped, obviously, at this stage, and that'll probably show up quicker than September the 2nd. We want to get out on the ocean, and because we're going to mass die off down here, 
I'm I'm just uh, I'm a little little still in shock that this is all taking place so so uh, so quick, right? Because it's been such a struggle, and we identified the problem and everything else. Now we're going to deal with it, and so um, I'm pretty uh, happy. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, I'm under a lot of stress, you know. We got a mass die off happening. Uh, hang on, there we go. And so I'm just. So it's rather interesting how the spam bots show up just as my show is ending. And when I typically go into the comments section, that's when the spam bot, 90% of the times will show up, right? <laughs> but, um, so let's call, close the poll and we'll say goodnight to everybody. 63 votes, should Japan, Japanese deadly radioactive food be banned worldwide? 63 votes, 95% of the people understood the significance that you are not supposed to eat radioactive food under any circumstances. Let me go way back into the comment. Dana Nasana. Oh, good night, Dana. Onion Breath. Hi there. Obsolete Optics. Good night, Obsolete. James Lucid. Again, thank you, my friend. Stephen Young. Awesome to see Stephen. John Curtis, Richard, Victor, John Shiflett. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. And so tonight's a bit strange because we covered those uh, presentations from Japan from 11 years ago. But nobody has ever challenged that, right? And uh, I know I don't make much of a difference, but at least we we covered it, right? Angel's Place. Hi. Good night, everybody. I know Colette S. is out there somewhere tonight. Kevin Blanche. Hi, Kevin. Just coming down through the comments to the most recent... Uh, Starlight, good night everybody. Starlight sign. Wayne. Yeah, good night everyone. Wayne Higley, is it? Heigl, I can't pronounce. Name's very good. John Curtis, I think I already said hi. Good night. Darlene. Just scrolling down quickly through the names. Quick shout out to everybody. I'm, I must admit, I'm a big monkey off my shoulder. We can deal with the truck tomorrow. Crop Pathfinder. Old chat bots came in and spammed the shit out of a stinker. CO Van Horn. Andrew B. Dale P. Who knows? I don't even know how long, what I mean by that is, who knows, Kevo, who knows how long the show is tonight, let me check here. Well, it's regular time, almost two hours. 
sure takes a lot longer to put it all together than it does to take to tell it. Warren. That is extra brutal night because we've done the video. That's a huge amount of work to chop them things up. I'm coming right down. Albert. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Hugs for everybody. Have a great night. We'll see everybody tomorrow night, except for the, for the spammer out there. Hopefully, they go bug somebody else for a change. So if you made it this far, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. I'll see everybody tomorrow night. I actually thought tonight was going to take a lot longer to get through everything because one of my biggest problems is I don't know how to stop. Once I start working, I start throwing everything into her because it's important. <laughs> If I'm looking at it, it's important. I can't not throw it in the pie. If I don't throw it in the pie, then it'll bother me, right? That's the whole thing with this subject. There is no shortcuts. You can't justify skipping anything, right? Everything is too important. The idea is to have an educational program. You can't do it without educating, folks. It's call of night. Super excited to get the truck working. We can tow the trailers again. That's kind of important in the stuff I like to do. And we'll see everybody tomorrow night. Hugs for everybody. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you think about it. We'll see everybody in a little bit. Have a great night. Great day tomorrow. Hugs for everyone. Take care, folks. Yep, Phil one, Philip one. Good night. See everybody tomorrow night. Take care, folks.